It's safe to say most people would consider the Seiko SNKs to be one of the best values in the watch industry. The vast majority of watches in the $50 to $60 price range are quartz, yet the Seiko SNK is a Japanese automatic for the same price. It's probably the best entry-level automatic, and most people would recommend it as the first automatic watch someone should buy. Yet for the last few months there has been a problem. For whatever reason, the price of the SNKs have been up. The black SNK 809 is currently 110 on Amazon, with the blue and cream versions sitting around 72. Only the green SNK 805 has stayed closer to its normal price, currently at 65. Now, with the exception of the SNK 809, they are still undoubtedly a good value, but it begs the question as to, with the price increase, are they still the best entry-level automatic? So I thought it would be interesting to do a video where I'd compare an SNK to another entry-level automatic that I recently acquired, a Vostok Amphibia. Since this is my first comparison video, I plan to do this in two parts. The first, to empirically compare the watches over 10 categories, compare the watches in those categories, and award one point accordingly, then sum up the points. The second part is giving you my personal opinion on whether or not I agree with that evaluation. So for the first category, let's start with the quality of the cases. Both are a stainless steel, but mirror images of each other. While the Vostok has a polished look on most of the case, with a brushed case back, the SNK has a brushed look on top, with a polished look on back. The Vostok's bezel is brass, and possibly the crown as well. Although this is a moot point for me, as a Seiko doesn't even have a bezel, and has a tiny inconvenient little crown. In my opinion, the finishing of the Seiko SNK is better than the Amphibia. Now, my Amphibia arrived with a very fine scratch on its side, but I will give them the benefit of the doubt that this is just a random occurrence that I happen to get. But regardless, the edges on the case of the Amphibia are just a little bit sharper than the Seiko's. On the back of the watches, you have two very different approaches. The Seiko has an exhibition case back with Hardlux crystal, while the Vostok has its more unique case back with a separate ring that screws down and holds it in place. The finishing of the Vostok's case back is just a little bit rougher than the rest of the watch. Back to the front of the watches, the Seiko has a Hardlux crystal, while there's an acrylic on the Vostok. But it's not quite that simple as the Vostok's acrylic crystal is also a domed crystal. Now it's hard to count the Vostok's acrylic crystal against it, as the material and the shape play a key role in improving its water resistance. But regardless, I think the Seiko SNK has a better quality case. It's finishing, as well as its exhibition case back, being the major factors. Now let's talk about the quality of the straps that come with both watches. And this is an easy one, considering I don't actually have the factory bracelet on my Vostok. And more to the point, I refuse to put it on. But let me elaborate. The SNK has a nylon strap, usually in a color matching its dial. It's nothing fancy, but it is thick with good quality hardware. It may not be the most stylish thing, but it should last you a while. Now while the Amphibia does come with a metal bracelet, I think it is possibly one of the worst bracelets I have seen. It has very thin metal, lightweight, and an absolutely horrid clasp. Which is why I immediately took it off. So while the Amphibia does come with a metal bracelet, I think the Seiko SNK's nylon strap is much more usable and longer lasting. So with that in mind, I give the point to the Seiko in this category. So onto the movements of the watches. Both watches have automatic movements, with the Seiko having the well-tested 21 Joule 7S26, whereas the Vostok has its own 31 Joule 2415. I think the Seiko also wins in this category, but again, let me elaborate. The Vostok has hand winding, which to me is a major advantage. 
but its power reserve is listed at only 31 hours, and it runs about 19,800 beats per hour. Compared to the 7S26, which has a reserve around 40 hours, and runs at 21,600 beats per hour. Also, the Seiko has both day and date complications. And just as importantly, the day and date are quick set, something the Vostok lacks. But most important to me is the spec accuracy of each movement. I believe the Seiko 7S26 should be around plus or minus 25 seconds a day. While the Vostok is listed at negative 20 to plus 60 per day. Now the watch that you receive will probably and hopefully be better than spec. But it's what's guaranteed coming out of the factory that I think is important, especially for people who don't know how to regulate their own watches. So on that regard, I think the Seiko's movement is better. Let's talk about what I call functionality and usability, which for me is not only how does the watch work as a timepiece, but how does it wear as well. In many ways, this category isn't really a fair comparison. Field watches in general are well known for their ease of use. And the Seiko SNK is no different. It is a very easy to read watch, with both hour and minute markers. And that isn't even mentioning it has both a day and date complication. Now the Amphibia is not difficult to read by any means. And if you have a version of a bezel that has minute markers, it makes it even easier. It's just that the Seiko SNK is really designed to be easy to read. That said, the bezel of the Amphibia does give it an extra feature if you actually use it. But that's not to mention that Amphibia is also a dive watch, although I think that factors more into the next two categories. Now this category also includes Loom. While the Vostok's Loom does seem to initially be brighter or just as bright as the Seiko's, it doesn't last near as long as the Seiko's. For me, the two are very close in this category. But what ultimately gives the Seiko SNK an edge is its wearability. It's fairly thin at about 10.5 millimeters, whereas the Amphibia is fairly thick at 15 millimeters. I've only had my Amphibia for about a month, and I've already lost count of how many times I've whacked it into something. So while it's close, I feel like the Seiko should get the point in this category. The next category is versatility which for me is how many situations can that watch be used in effectively. For example, how well can a casual watch work in a dress situation? In that respect, I believe the SNK has an advantage. It has a much cleaner and slimmer look. If you change the strap to something nicer, dressing it up a bit, I think the SNK would have a much easier time blending in with a suit than the Amphibia would. That said, the Amphibia is a dive watch, and diving is a specific situation. And there is no comparison in that regard to the SNK. So since I do actually dive, I would give the point to the Vostok for versatility. So on to durability. The Seiko gets a lot of credit for having a scratch resistant Hardlux crystal, especially compared to the acrylic crystal on the Vostok. But the Seiko SNK has a low water resistance of only 30 meters while the Vostok is rated down to 200 meters. So in many ways, this is really a question of what's more important, water resistance or scratch resistance, which can be a very subjective conversation. But for me, I have to say water resistance. If you also consider the wobbly crown of the Vostok, which I think is actually a negative in terms of functionality, but in terms of durability, I think it is a positive as it is supposedly designed to protect the movement from direct impacts. So for me, the wobbly crown as well as the water resistance makes the Vostok a more durable watch than the Seiko SNK. The next category I call perceived quality, which also includes reliability and repairability. Now the ability to repair either of these watches is kind of a moot point. If a watch at this price range breaks, you're just going to buy a new watch. It'll cost more to repair it than it does to buy one. But in this instance, perceived quality is more about the quality control of the manufacturer when the watch is leaving the factory, as there is a pretty good chance you will be buying one of these sight unseen online. 
So it's more about the odds of getting a watch delivered to you without any problems. Or if there is a problem, how easy is it to remedy that situation? So for this category, I think it's an easy win for the Seiko. If you do happen to receive a watch with a problem, as long as you didn't buy it from eBay, it should be fairly easy to return. Or if something happens to it later on, as long as you're under warranty, it should be relatively easy for Seiko to take care of it. Now compare that to the Vostok, where if there is a problem with it, well, good luck with that. Now we come to the design category, which is more about the style of the watch, which is arguably a very subjective category. Here are the dimensions of the two watches. Now the Seiko SNK is a no-nonsense field watch, and regardless of which of the four colors you choose, you'll get a very usable, clean-looking watch, which makes it an extremely functional watch. But that also makes it a very boring-looking watch. Which is why I think the Vostok easily wins this category. If you have seen my review of this amphibia, you'll know that I love this dial with the metal flakes that shimmer in the light. But even beyond that, there are a multitude of different cases and dial combinations for the Vostok Amphibia. So depending on your tastes, you should find one that you like. Now throw in a domed crystal, and the Vostok is an easy choice for this category. The second to last category is what I call uniqueness. If someone were to ask you about this watch, how much of a story do you have to tell about it? What is it about the watch that makes it special, unique, or interesting? And again, I think the Amphibia easily wins this category. For the Seiko SNK, what really makes it special is that it's a very cheap automatic Seiko, where the Amphibia is a much more interesting watch, from a unique history to the oddities of its unique design. Now the last category, value, which again is very subjective. Monetarily speaking, I want to say that both of these watches are on par with each other. Even if the price of the Seiko SNKs go back down, you can occasionally get a good deal on a Vostok. Now with the Seiko SNK, you are getting a low entry point into the world of Japanese automatics. It's a great watch from a great quality brand. Whereas with the Amphibia, you are getting a very dive capable watch at a fairly low price. I think it's a close call when it comes to value. But I think in the end, the Seiko has the better value. So looking at the totals, the Seiko SNK wins with 6 points, compared to the 4 points for the Vostok Amphibia. So from an empirical approach, the numbers say that even at a slightly higher price, the Seiko SNK is still the best entry-level automatic. And I completely agree with it on a personal level, especially for someone that is looking for their first automatic the Seiko would give them a better sense of what to expect from other watches moving forward, where the Vostok's quirkiness may be a little confusing. So for most people, I would always recommend a Seiko SNK over a Vostok Amphibia. With one possible exception, if you are or are planning on becoming a collector of watches, in which case uniqueness plays a much more important role in making a decision. For me, Collecting watches is about getting a taste of everything. Getting a taste of different brands, different types, and even watches from different countries. For me, there are many great Seikos and honestly better Seiko watches out there than the SNK, that it would only be a matter of time before I bought another one, at which point the SNK doesn't really fit any particular niche in my collection, so I don't really think it has much long-term staying power for a collector. Now compare that to a Vostok Amphibia, which is quirky and unique and there really isn't much out there like it. I think it has much more longer staying power in a collection and in that way more value to a collector. Regardless, they're both great entry level automatic watches that bring a lot of value to the table and you really can't go wrong with either one. But let me know which watch you prefer in the comments and why. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.